Welcome to another Women and the Series with Tobu Sigwe Ikolomo. Today, I want to teach on how to erect a simple prayer altar for your chi and your Indi Ifie, your ancestors. In the olden days, um, to erect this altar, you may pass through some rigorous process depending on who is doing it for you. Even as of, as of now, people think that to erect an altar for your chi or for your Indi Ifie is that rigorous. Yes, it may be to some people, but there are other simple ways that you can do this. Because what is important as an Igbo person is that you pray to your she every morning. And you also pray to your Indi Ifie every morning. So this prayer, early morning prayer as an Igbo man to your chi and your Indi Ifie is more important than the process you go through in erecting the altar. Some people go as far as visiting a, a Dibia priest or an elder. There is nothing wrong with this. But in absence of a Dibia, an elder, or someone to help you to erect an altar for your chi or for your ndishi, it doesn't mean you cannot do it by yourself. After all, you are also a god. You are also a priest in your own right. So you can erect a simple prayer altar for your chi and your ndishi. Here we, here with me, I have what we call mbume, stone. This is stone. This is ogilisi. And this is just a container. For example, if you are overseas, you are abroad, you are living in somewhere uh, far away from your community, in a flat, in a, um, in a one-room apartment, and you want to erect a prayer altar for your chief, you might not go to the extent of using this, these two other items here. You can just get a sand from your family compound and pour it into a container like this, or you can just get a bowl and pour the container and pour the sand into your con into the container. Now, before I proceed on how you are going to do to do this, I need to say something very important. If you are living in your father's compound, if you are living in the same under the same roof with your father, and your father is alive, there is no need for you to erect a prayer altar. I repeat, if you, are, if you are living with your father and your father is still alive, you are living in the same house, under the same roof with him, you have no business erecting a prayer altar. Why? Because there is no two, there can never be two captains in a ship. There can never be two captains in a ship. If you want to erect your own altar, prayer altar, where you go directly to offer prayers to your she and your ancestors, your own she. You need to have your own compound or your own place. You know that, okay, this space belongs to you and you are in charge of this space. That is when you are allowed to do what I'm about to teach right now. Now, this is Ogilisi. This is one of the most popular tree in Igbo land, Ogilisi. You can just Take this, and you get to that particular spot that you want to um, start using as your as your private praying area. You can call it your chapel, whatever name you can call it your temple. In Igbo, we call it Oku. You will just plant this into the ground. The tendency that it will grow is always eighty to eighty-five percent. That is why mostly people use ogilisi. If you plant ogilisi, the tendency that it will grow is always high. It's always very high. And in case it doesn't grow, you can still plant another one. You can now use this ogilisi that is planted as a symbol. It, sim it now symbolizes your she. So in the morning, if you, if, you, if you wake up in the morning, you go to this particular sacred spot and use your praying materials like uzu and uh, kula not hot drink, a do, whichever one that is convenient for you or that is available. 
Now, if you wake up in the morning, you go to this sacred spot where you have planted this ogilisi with your prayer items, with your uzu, your edo, your oje, your prayer sacrament. You go to this place and you pray to your chi in front of the ogilisi that you have planted. Around this place, you have planted the ogilisi. You can set up, you will set up this um, ume, stone. Remember, you don't use block, you use ume. Because block is man made, but this is natural, it's close to nature. It's three. It, it doesn't have to be less. You must understand that in spirituality, that numbers are important. Three means stability. Our people say, three means stability. So it has to be three. And you must understand that a prayer, your prayer spot is like the source of your strength. So if it's four, it means another thing. If it's five, it means another thing. If it's six, it means another thing. If it's seven, it means another thing. So number is very important in spirituality. So if you are setting up an altar for your own dish here, it has to be three. This tool has to be three. It doesn't have to be more than three. If it has to be more than three, you, need, you that is making it more than three should know the reason why you are making it more than three. Now, like I said, you can just, okay, you can put this, that this place is for your dish here. This place, this particular spot now is for your sheep. So when you come in the morning, you do your morning prayers in front of your chi, and you do your morning prayer in front of your indishi. You say chi mbiya tu onzu, you throw the onzu, chi indishi ben namfa, mbiya tu onzu, you throw the onzu. You can also call the indishi from your maternal side. If your father and your mother are in good times, you call them at this particular spot for your indishi. You can also come and receive their own for their own onzu. Then you give, you break kola knots for your chi, after breaking the kula knot for your chi, you also break kula knot for your ndishi and ask them to come and eat kula knot. If you have one kula knot, you can ask all of you, you can break the kula knot and you, you all share in this, partake of this communion. Now, this is how to set up a sacred altar. Like I said, if you are not living in your homestead, in your family, uh, in your own environment where you can plant this, or create this kind of outdoor altar. You can create something indoor using the your the sand from your family compound, not just any sand. It has to be the sand from your family compound. You just put it in a container, you create a place, perhaps you put a table, just make the the area sacred. A prayer area has to be sacred. That's why you see some people put candle, you see some people put incense and all that. You can also use all those. You can put incense after putting the sand. But the sand has to be there from your family compound. Then, at that particular spot, when you come in the morning, you now ask your chi and ndishi to come and partake um, of, of the morning communion to with Nzu and Kolanot. So, if you're outside your community, you should look for ways you can you will have access to uzu and kola knot. Uzu can last a, a little uzu can last for you for as long as three or five months, depending on how you use it. Now, and uh, I will explain how to pray. How to pray in Igbo is totally different from how you pray as a Christian. You know that most Igbos are. A Christian. Now that you are having this kind of cultural renaissance, some people make the mistake of using the mindset of how they pray in as a Christian to pray in Ibu Minana. It's not like that. In Ibu Minana, as an Omenani adherent, if you are praying to your chi, you cannot pray in front of your chi and be bringing extraneous matters. You cannot be asking your chi to bless your father, to bless your mother. To bless your brothers and sisters. Your chief has no business with your father and your mother. 
your she has no business with your brothers and your sisters. Once you stand before you stand before your she to pray, you are praying only about yourself. You are asking for protection for yourself. You are asking for security for yourself. You are asking for provision for yourself. You are thanking she, your she for what your she has done for you. Please, if you have not watched watched my she video, I have a video. Oh, I have about two videos on she. You can check it out. She is something that is personal. It's a personal guide. So you cannot be asking your personal guide, uh, asking him or her to get involved in another person's business. So once you are in front of your she in the morning to pray, your prayer should be about you and you alone. If you want to talk about your family members, you wait till you get to your Indish year. And in this year, you are only talking about people within the family. In fact, let me tell, let me say this. In Ominana, a child is not even supposed to be praying for his or her elders. You do not pray for your father, you do not pray for your mother. Because ordinarily, that is their duty. It is the duty of the father to bless the child. It is the duty of the mother to bless the child. So you, you pray for your own welfare. If you are married, you can now pray for the blessings of, upon your, to be upon your family. That is in front of your indish here, not in front of your chief. If you are now married, you pray for your own family, for your wife or wives and your children or a child as, as the case may be. That is in front of indish here. You do not come before your own this year asking them, praying for people that do not relate to you, for, for what is not your business. So your prayers are streamlined in Ominana. If it comes to Chi, you pray only for yourself. If you have any request to make, that request should be what concerns you. Personally, as an individual. Now, if it's... Um, for your family, your nuclear family. Nuclear family in this sense means your wife and your children. You ask for their blessings. If you are not married, you ask for your, for blessing upon your upon yourself. Yes, you may want to pray for your brothers and your sisters. You are permitted to do that. You for ask for both your brothers and your sisters. You are praying for should know or they have equal access to the initiate. So ordinarily, they should also go before the Ndishie, the throne of Ndishie, to obtain mercy. Now, that is it on how to set up a prayer item, a, sorry, a prayer altar for your chi and your Ndishie. And also how to make an appeal. Now, let me say it again. You use your gilisi for your chi, you plant it on the ground and ask your chi that from today, that this is where you will be making official prayer to him or her. Now, for the stones, you now ask, you ask your only share that this stone symbolizes them. That is in front of them, you will be making your prayers and sacrifices. Then, like I said in my sheet video, please, if you have not watched my sheet video, go and watch it. Daily, you start your daily communion. It is the daily communion that is important. After setting up the altar, the daily prayer is what is the most important in this work. And like I said, once you stand before your sheet, you pray for only matters that concerns you. And in your and in this year, you pray for matters that concerns you and your homestead. Homestead in this sense, in this sense means your wife and your children. If you are not married for yourself then you are obliged to also pray for your brothers and your sisters. But praying for your fathers and your mothers is an anomaly in Ibu Minana. You don't pray for your fathers and your mothers. A child does not bless the elder. A child does not rescue an elder. It's the elder that rescues the, a child. It's the elder that blesses the child. Thank you. If you love the video you will just watch, please like and subscribe. And also share the video. Please like Subscribe and share this video if you love it. Thank you. I know one of the color, the color.